Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I am doing a Which Books Have Gotten Me Here video. Um, as you know by now, I graduated this weekend, yesterday, which is unbelievably exciting and also absolutely terrifying. But at any rate, in honor of graduating, I decided that I would make a video about what books have gotten me here, basically. A list of 10 books that are either just incredibly memorable or have some sort of sentimental value. Oftentimes both. Let's get started. The first one is the one that got me started on my Elizabeth I obsession, which has lasted more than 10 years now, and that is Beware Princess Elizabeth by Caroline Myers. This book is a YA historical fiction about Elizabeth I when she's a princess. The end of the book has her becoming queen. I remember reading this book in seventh grade and then we had to do a book report on a book of our choice. It was only supposed to be a five minute report, I did a ten minute report, and if we dressed up as a character from the book, we got sort of a bonus pat on the back. I had an Elizabeth I costume from Halloween, and so I brought that to school, petticoat and everything, and put that on, spoke for ten minutes, and then went to the bathroom and took it off and changed back into normal clothes. I remember several of my classmates saying that it didn't feel like 10 minutes, which made me feel really happy because I didn't know how to pare things down to minimum back then. But this book absolutely began my obsession with Elizabeth I. I started reading everything I could find on her, which included a book by Anne Rinaldi and um, the Mercedes Lackey books about the fantasy, some non-fictions as I got a little bit older, just everything I could possibly find. I made powerpoints about her and her family, I read about Henry, I read about Anne, Catherine, anybody of that name in, in that family. I just, it sent me on a lifelong obsession. Next is Dealing with Dragons by Patricia C. Reed, which is the book that I read in fifth grade that started me on my love of fantasy. Before that I read Boxcar Children and Bailey School Kids and Magic Treehouse, and I liked them but I was told that I couldn't read Boxcar Children anymore for school credit. so. I started branching out in fifth grade, and then we had to read this one for class. I read it, I loved it, and started wanting to be more like Simmerine. So by the time I hit seventh grade, I was very much so becoming this very independent person who didn't want or need anybody else because of Simmerine and in seventh grade, Elizabeth I. Dealing the Dragons is a middle grade fantasy that follows Simmerine, who is a princess, except she doesn't behave as a princess is supposed to do. So her parents try to marry her off, and Simmerine finds that out and decides she's gonna just go and volunteer to work for a dragon. So that's what she does, and that's where the story starts. It is so much fun. Next I have Bloody Jack by L.A. Meyer. This is a YA historical fiction about a young girl from London in the 1800s who decides that she doesn't want to end up at the end of a rope for stealing a loaf of bread because she's an orphan, so instead she disguises herself as a boy and runs off to join the Navy. There is a series of 14 books in this series, and I've read all of them except the last two, but I love them. She gets into so many adventures and so many scrapes and somehow gets out of all of them where sometimes you just look at it and go that's completely unrealistic and sometimes it's just too funny to say that it's unrealistic. These books started getting me into series and the non-Elizabethan historical fiction. Next is Mara, Daughter of the Nile. I don't remember the author but it'll be up here on the screen somewhere. This is another YA historical fiction about a young slave girl in Egypt during the time of Hatshepsut. The young slave girl is forced to be a spy and you go from there. It is one of my favorite books, it's so well done, and when I got my sister to read it, it became one of her all-time favorite books very quickly. I don't have it up here in North Dakota unfortunately, but as soon as I am back in Colorado or I'm able to unbox all of my books, I am definitely going to be reading it because I loved it. That started me on a kick with more ancient history. Next I have Flyboys. Again, don't remember the author up here on the screen. This is a nonfiction about World War II pilots from the States. I didn't technically finish this book the first time I read it. I think I was maybe in ninth grade 
And the reason I didn't finish it was because in ninth grade I was a bit of a um, prude and I didn't like any sort of swearing at all. So reading a book with a lot of f-bombs dropped in it and a lot of language because they're pilots and about to be killed and you know that's completely justifiable <laughs> as a 15 year old that made me really uncomfortable. So I didn't finish it. I have since gone back and finished it and it's a really good portrayal of World War II in the Pacific. Since then I have gone on to read many other World War II books and that book is the one that started the, the World War II fascination for me. Then I have War and Peace, which is the book that sort of made me realize that classics and long classics specifically are good and fascinating and so much fun to read. I read this and Les Mis at the same time because I took an AP English class my senior year of high school and we, the summer before we had to read six classics that we had never read before and by an author we hadn't read. I cheated a little bit and used one of the plays by Shakespeare, but I hadn't read the play, I read The Tempest, so it's fine. At any rate, War and Peace is about Russian nobility during the Napoleonic War, when Napoleon tries to invade Russia and that just doesn't go well. I wish I would have had a family tree for this book, because it is unbelievably hard to figure out who's who in Russian aristocracy in the 1800s when they all have the same nicknames. However, about 500 pages in, I finally figured out who was who, and I loved it from there. I'm really hoping to be able to reread it soon, because like I said, it's just fantastic. Next, I have The Black Griffin by Mercedes Lackey. I actually think this was one of the first Mercedes Lackey books I ever read, and it is the reason I love her so much today and own so many of her books. This is the start of her Valdemar Kingdoms. There is a magician who is friends with griffins, or creates griffins, and there is a war, the griffins fight, and it all starts here. There are so, so many books in this series, which is basically made up of a couple of standalones and mini trilogies. This book, like I said, just got me into Mercedes Lackey and got me into more adult fantasy so that I'm not just reading the same YA fantasy. I think Mercedes Lackey is an amazing author. She's incredibly diverse in her plots or at least makes it seem like a war every trilogy isn't overdone. So uh, when I started reading these, I got hooked. Then once I reached law school, um, I continued reading, as you can tell, and my 1L year, somehow I managed to read Le Morte d'Arthur. I think I just wanted to read a classic. I was kind of a little bit sick of all the cases and I just wanted something more. So I decided to read a thousand page book that was written in 14th century English. It's fine, I'm crazy, I know. Anyway, this book is The, Arth the Tale of King Arthur and it's definitely hard to get into it but if you keep reading it every day it's much easier because the language starts to make sense, which was a learning curve, but I figured it out pretty quickly and I really enjoyed this book and it refreshed my love for classics and for long books that you can really sink your teeth into. And then the last book I'm going to talk about today is The Sultan and the Queen, which is a nonfiction about, guess who? Yup, Elizabeth. I told you I have an obsession with her and the first year of law school, I wasn't really reading a lot of nonfiction because there is a severe learning curve in law school where your brain just hurts all the time because you're trying to take in so much information and figure out how to read cases and figure out what the professors want and figure out how to write like a lawyer. It's a lot. So I was reading a lot less nonfiction. With the exception of Lamar to Arthur, I wasn't even reading heavy books necessarily. However, my tool year, I really started to miss my history. That was my major in college was history and so I needed something to sustain me. The Sultan and the Queen was the first non-fiction book that I read in law school and really just kicked off my non-fiction for last summer, which is primarily what I read in July of last year. This book is about Elizabeth I and her relationship with the Islamic countries, empires at the time. It was really interesting, it was a really easy read, and I loved learning about something that I didn't know. 
he was really good about bringing in modern Elizabethan references and culture such as Shakespeare's plays or Marlowe's plays and how they took the times to fit their audience. So uh, Christopher Marlowe has an entire play called Tamburlaine after Timur the Lame who was a emperor of India about the 1400s I think and I just really enjoyed reading about that and learning more about Elizabeth specifically an aspect that I hadn't learned about before. Those are the 10 books that have gotten me where I am today, more or less. Obviously there are many more books that have made me into who I am, but for the sake of timeliness, we're gonna stick to 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you wanna see more content like this, hit that subscribe button down below. As always, I will leave my Goodreads linked in the description, but until my next video, bye.